Hi, you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Over here in the Atlantic, we are watching incoming invests from the Eastern Atlantic. The only one viewable via the GOES satellites right now is Invest 92L, sitting out here west of the Cape Verde Islands, negatively tilted tropical wave with a broad circulation around it, no longer closed like it looked like it was yesterday, but now broad, elongated, and not really closed anymore. A lot of the convection has retreated down to the intertropical convergence zone, and we don't have as much here near the core of the wave axis. And this is, again, due to the dry air that is very visible to the west of the system over here, which is getting entrained from the west and giving this thing issues as it comes westward. And this ridge right here associated with the remnants of Emily is creating subsidence here east of the islands and is not helping things either as this environment in here is fairly hostile. I actually shouldn't call this the remnants of Emily. It's a piece that split off, I believe, from Emily. The real remnants are way up at 40 north latitude or something like that, and this is a cluster of thunderstorms that broke off. A little bit of low pressure along this trough boundary. This will be trying to come again underneath the ridge. Probably not going to be a threat for development as coming around the southeast flank of a ridge is extremely hard to do while maintaining any kind of significant low pressure in the subtropics. So this may be an interesting feature to see out ahead of this as it comes west-northwest, but I doubt it will be a significant threat for development at this time. And our next invest is invest 93L. Here's 92L. This one's right behind it here to the east, just south of the Cape Verde Islands now. It also has an SAL outbreak, but to its north. And this is embedded in the monsoon trough pretty far south here. And this will be coming nearly directly westward over the next several days. And this may get to avoid some of the dry air, especially with 92 clearing 92L clearing out the environment directly ahead of the storm's path. This, I know some of the models like the HWRF, the GFDL, and the GFS are jumping all over this for development here over the next few days. And this is increasing the confidence of some forecasters that this will develop. And the NHC has up their chances to 20%, which is actually generous by them for a system this far east right off of Africa. And I wouldn't jump the gun just yet on how fast this develops because it is still embedded in the monsoon trough and it is firing some convection which is nice to see because it needs to persist off the coast of Africa but it is still a fragile entity at the moment and we will have to see if it actually does try to develop in a couple or three days as it gets westward here. This is one of those blobs with inflow that isn't quite circulating yet. You see inflow coming in linearly here, here, um, no, it's monsoonal here, and then we have some coming in here. So it's all linear inflow in here, and we're not seeing much of what I would call radial you know, curvature of this stuff as it's moving around. We're not seeing much of a circulation yet. It's just inflow into a glob embedded in the monsoon trough, which is something that could easily dissipate on the way west, but the models are on this, so we need to watch this carefully for development as it comes west, but I wouldn't jump the gun on it developing immediately during the next few days. It may take its time. This is Invest92L's model tracks here, bringing this generally west-northwest, which should be something that makes sense given that the steering layer at the surface right now, if we have 92L right here, we have the big ridge to the north, to the north-northeast of the storm, and then we have a break in it associated with with again this area where the remnants or piece of Emily is somewhere in here there's a trough in here between two ridges we have a Bermuda high now and an Azores high basically split in half by this weakness and thus it makes sense that this should gain some latitude as it moves towards this weakness over the next few days and thus I agree with the west northwest movement here you can see where the models generally have it in about five days or so this may make a pass close to Bermuda as it tries to recurve I'm thinking recurvature east of the United States is more likely with the system given the timing that the models are currently forecasting we are going to have a trough over the eastern seaboard lifting out of the area but it looks like 92L may make it there in days 5 and 6 before the trough has a chance to fully lift out. A small change in the timing here if 92L moves slower could change this and allow it to get a little bit farther west in here before trying to recurve out. But at this point, I would think recurvature east of the United States is more likely than anything else. 93L, though, is pretty far south here, and if we look at the models, we can see that it brings it almost due west here, slightly north of west later on, getting close to the northeast Caribbean islands in the long term here. And, of course, these model runs will probably change with time. However, the fact that it is far south and may remain weak for a little while yet means that it could get into this area, and if, we, if it gets 
you know, to 60 west here, near 20 north or farther south, it could be a potential threat to the eastern seaboard down the line because we've got a pattern coming up that could direct storms to the coast if we have storms available to do that. This is the GFS Ensemble mean sea level pressure day five. This is 92L not showing up real strong here. 93L is back here. Sorry, blue screen again. Um, 93L showing up a little bit better here if we go out to day seven. That recurved. There is a trough in here that recurved 92L right out to sea here. And then if we go out by two days, that trough is gone. The ridge has returned here, at least at the surface, and the mid-levels as well. This is in here, and 93L is sitting down here just north of Puerto Rico. And this is the kind of pattern that could bring it in towards the eastern seaboard in time, the kind of pattern that we should be watching for just in case this does develop and threaten someone down the road. This is the European ensembles, 500 millibar mean height day 8. 192 hours and notice how zonal and flat the flow is over southeastern Canada here we have the big Texas Ridge sitting over the southwest and then we have the Atlantic Ridge out here again we have the weakness over the eastern seaboard kinda like we had with Emily where the weakness was sitting here and Emily got pretty close to Florida on its way out here and if we have a weakness sitting in here, but it's closing off as this trough lifts out, we have a couple of short waves that lift out to the northeast. We have a zonal flow up here. If we have a storm sitting somewhere in here trying to come west-northwest, it could easily try to curve up the eastern seaboard on its way out as it recurves to the east of this ridge. Again, this doesn't favor a storm getting into the Gulf of Mexico here as long as that ridge is sitting southward over Texas. But this break would direct a storm somewhere close to the eastern seaboard. So it's something we should watch for in the long term here and the GFS is hinting at it as well if we look at the temperatures at the surface this is the temperature anomalies for day seven and we see that it's very warm up here over southeastern Canada and New England this implies a lack of troughing in this area in other words we have more ridging aloft in here and then we have troughiness back here and a little bit of a weakness in the ridging is showing up here because there's some wetness going on, perhaps some rainfall and a little bit cooler air associated with maybe a short wave beneath that ridge with which a storm could probably pair with as it is moving up and phasing along the eastern seaboard. So it's a pattern that we should watch for over the next couple of weeks to see if we get threatened by either one of these invests. 92L I think will recurve more likely to here as this is already gaining latitude pretty far north and if it develops especially if it develops it will probably recurve here it will be slow to develop again warm water it doesn't hit real warm water until it gets to here 50 west and it's got a lot of dry air wrapped up to deal with no surprise here it will be a slow developer we'll see if we actually get a named storm out of this the one behind it if it persists 93L may try to become a storm as well some of the models like it better it may get a name here, but we need to wait for it to see if it's continuing to fire convection, actually developing a circulation. Again, right now, this is not circulating as much as I'd like to see, so we need to give it a little bit of time before we guarantee its development here, but it is definitely a threat down the road, and if it does develop, could be something that tries to threaten land, Caribbean islands, or the southeast U.S. in the long term. So we will keep a close eye on these two as they journey across the Atlantic as a one-two punch. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.